so pure knight armies are going to have far more command points than the new edition, but imperial knights with allies, maybe not so much. Let's talk about the new super heavy detachments and knight rules. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we've been covering the 9th edition news as it's been coming out. In a couple of Warhammer community articles over the last couple of days, Games Workshop have posted a few pictures up of the Super Heavy Detachment, Super Heavy Auxiliary Detachment and the updated rules for Knight Lances in 9th edition. In the video we'll talk over each of these new rules in turn and then have a general conversation about how I think Super Heavies are going to play in the new edition, with all the rules changes that we've seen so far. Let's get straight into it. So first up we have the Super Heavy Detachment and the Super Heavy Auxiliary, both of which retain their same names from 8th edition, and essentially the things that you can put in them are still the same. With the Super Heavy it's still 3-5 to five Imperial Knights or other Lords of War, and in the Super Heavy Auxiliary it's just the one. Previously taking a Super Heavy Detachment would generate you 3 command points, but now it costs you between 3-6, to six, unless you're playing Imperial Knights, as we'll discuss. Basically in 9th edition 40k, say if you're playing a 2000 point game, then you'll be starting with 12 command points at base. If you include a super heavy detachment in your army, then it's going to cost you 6 command points if you have any titanic units in the detachment. So say for example if you were playing Imperial Guard and you wanted to take a Shadow Sword and a couple of Bane Blades as the main strength of your list, and then have the rest filled out in other battalions or something. To me, under normal circumstances, this seems like really quite a steep price to pay. Typically for armies like the Guard at the moment, the opportunity cost will be taking a super heavy detachment that got you 3 command points, over say filling out that detachment slot with a battalion detachment which would get you 5, mean that it was kind of costing you 2 command points to include that super heavy before in the past. Now at the cost of 6 command points, fielding mass super heavies just isn't going to be quite as feasible as it was before, and I think that this is a particularly bad blow to fairly cheap super heavies, say if you wanted a Bane Blade and a couple of Gorgon super heavy transports in the Lords of War choice. Unless you're taking yet more super heavies in that same detachment, then you're spending quite a lot of command points to have those options available. Technically, the super heavy detachment can cost only 3 command points if you include Lord of War choices that don't have the Titanic keyword. Off the top of my head, just some general knowledge, the only ones that I know of are Armagers or War Dogs from Imperial Knights, so please let me know down in the comments if you can think of any other Lords of War that aren't Titanic that I can't seem to think of at the moment. Basically this means that if you wanted a detachment of Imperial Knight Armagers to support your force, it would only cost you 3 command points rather than the standard 5. Finally, you can also spend 3 command points just to include any one super heavy, although as we know from the way that the rules are written, if you do fill them in individual super heavy auxiliary supports, then you don't get things like household traits or regiment traits for Imperial Guard super heavies for example. It's still a pretty hefty opportunity cost in my opinion, as it means that if you could get away with spending those points on something else within the detachments that you already have available, then you'll be getting 3 command points more than you would have otherwise, and command points can do a lot of cool things. Obviously it won't tank your initial starting command points quite as badly as a super heavy detachment though. I think it's interesting that we're still in the weird situation that if you take exactly two super heavies, then that's pretty much the worst configuration that you can field them in still. As you'd have to take them in two auxiliary detachments, costing you six command points, they wouldn't get their chapter traits or household traits or whatever, and they'd also eat up two detachment slots rather than one, which can hamper army construction. For some reason, Games Workshop still very much wants you to field either one or three of the things. I think the biggest remaining question mark is the state of the Supreme Command Detachment, whether that's still a thing in 9th, and whether that could be another way to get one Lord of War, while also unlocking a bunch of HQ choices should you want them. If it is still unchanged and it costs 3 command points like quite a lot of the detachments seem to, then that could be a far better choice than the Super Heavy Auxiliary for armies with access to good HQs. So moving on, let's talk about the Lance rule for the Imperial and Chaos Knights. Games Workshop showed us this one today in the Chaos Knights article, where it talks about the Traitor Lances. Basically, if your Warlord has the Chaos Knight or Imperial Knights keyword, in a Chaos or Imperial Knights Super Heavy Detachment, that's not auxiliary detachments, just the standard detachments, then basically you will have those command points that you've invested in that one refunded. If your Warlord for some reason does happen to be an Armager, you get 3 command points back, and if it is a Titanic unit, then you get the full 6 back. Now this one is going to heavily reward you taking a Warlord in one of these detachments if you're playing Imperial Knights. Say if you are taking three of the bigger style knights to the field, then if you run your actual Warlord as one of them, then it's going to earn you 6 command points, compared with not doing so. Interestingly, this is really quite a big incentive to take a pure Imperial Knights list, as in general you should be able to fairly comfortably get away with fielding just one super heavy detachment for Imperial Knights, maybe three big knights and four war dogs in two units, or four big knights and two war dogs in one slot. If you do take a pure knight detachment like this, then you're going to be getting around about 18 command points in ninth by the end of the game, because you'll start with a full 12 and then generate one per turn. 
Compare that with in 8th, where you'd be getting somewhere like 9 to 12 command points, depending on exactly how you cut up the detachments. So in terms of running pure Imperial Knights or pure Chaos Knights, you're going to get a very hefty command point reward compared with the previous edition of the game. I think it's a bit more equivocal for a more standard looking Allied Knights list, say if you took a detachment of 3 Imperial Knights, and then a battalion of something else. In Knight, it's actually going to be quite a big difference depending on whether you make a Knight your Warlord, or if you make your Warlord someone from that other battalion. If you choose to make it from the other battalion, then you'll only be getting 12 command points over the game, assuming a 6 turn game and 1 command point per turn, whereas around about 15 if you do make the Knight your Warlord. Compare this to 8th, where between the battalion and the Knight's Super Heavy Lance, then you'd be getting 14 command points right off the bat, which I'd say would be arguably more useful than either, seeing as you have them straight away, rather than having to wait for them in ninth. So personally, I don't really feel it's much of a buff to allied-style knight lists, and in fact kind of restricts their ally options a bit, as you really don't want to be taking yet another battalion on top of the first. Knights with soup does seem to be a little bit discouraged by the command point change at least. So how is it looking for super heavies in ninth in general then? I feel like in terms of the command point changes, and the fact that you're almost always going to want at least some allies to do things like holding objectives or screening for your big vehicles, I really think that super heavy detachments might not be seeing quite as much competitive play as they were in 8th, maybe outside knights where you can offset the command points. 3 command points just to bring one along, or 6 for having 3, is really quite a high price, and it does make options that can fit inside either a battalion or brigade really quite a lot more attractive. I think the single biggest challenge to Super Heavies in 9th edition are the new terrain rules, particularly the obscuring terrain one, which means that potentially units on the other side of a ruin might be able to see you, but you might not be able to see them. Also having enemy units being able to make use of dense cover for minus one to hit, while you're not able to, is also another negative. The Overwatch change is generally going to be a nerf to most Super Heavies, besides the close combat orientated ones. But I would bear in mind that having one command point to have an entire super heavy fire overwatch is likely going to be more powerful on the whole than using that stratagem for virtually anyone else in the game. So in terms of overwatch, it might be a bit reduced, but they're still likely to have some of the strongest going. For Imperial Knights and other close combat related super heavies, worse multi-charging isn't the best news, as it does mean that you're not quite as happy to declare charges on things that are a little bit further away, as it could risk your knight not getting any close combat attacks whatsoever. Finally, however, blast weapon changes I think are generally going to be a positive, as a lot of the weapons that they're sporting will be blast weapons. They can typically fall back and shoot them for no penalty whatsoever, and having bigger, better blast weapons isn't going to help any enemy armies when they're targeting super heavies, so I guess they certainly win out against infantry formations in that sort of way. Personally, I think on balance for most of these changes, I think that Super Heavies are going to have a bit more of a rough time in 9th edition compared with in 8th. Hopefully if we do want to see some Imperial Knights or Bane Blades on the table, then the points changes will be fairly kind to them, maybe not quite increasing quite as much as some of the other options in other codexes. If you can think of any other implications to any of these things, or anything that I've missed, then please let me know down in the comments below. It'd be good to hear what your thoughts are on these changes. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics for more 9th edition news as it comes out. And if you'd like to help support the channel, I do have an Element Games affiliate link, which is down in the video description below. If you live in the UK or Europe, Element is a pretty excellent discount retailer that does Warhammer 40k products at a 10-20% discount. And if you order through them after clicking on the link below, then a little bit goes to Allspets Tactics without costing you any more. It can just be a way to help support the channel if you were thinking about buying some models anyway. I also have a very similar link for Amazon in the USA and Canada. It works in a very similar way. Basically, you click the link, and if you make any purchases on Amazon within the next 24 hours, a small amount goes to help support the channel without costing you any more at all. A big thank you to you guys who have been using those. It really does make a big difference. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.